today we have the privilege of honoring the legendary Mickey Rourke. Now, I would like to introduce the hilarious and talented John Favreau. H hilarious, huh? That's, I was going to be serious today for Mickey. Nice to see all of you on this nice, fine, sunny day. We're here to honor uh, Mickey Rourke, who I had the pleasure of working with on Iron Man 2. Uh, but I was first aware of Mickey uh, long before I was aware of who was who in Hollywood. I remember seeing him in Diner, Barfly, Rumblefish, and, and what person who was a teenager in the 80s didn't try to emulate him in a more romantic moment, channeling him in nine and a half weeks, but just making a mess of the kitchen. This reminds me a lot of working with Mickey as a director. Here he is, uh, saying hello. How's it going, Mickey? Good, yeah, there we go. Let me explain something to you. Everybody knows his performances are explosive right but just like working with high explosives you have to treat him with patience with soft hands and once the charge is set into place he'll do something beyond your wildest expectations he doesn't care if you leer you gawk you laugh or you're or you're brought to tears as long as his performances rivet you and i have to say that mickey rourke is a one-man circus he's a he's a high wire act sometimes he plays the clown sometimes he's the lion tamer but he's always the ringmaster so I will say this, but it is truly Mickey's vulnerability and raw and painful humanity that make his performances so memorable. It is my pleasure now to introduce his co-star from, I think is probably my favorite performance that, uh, my favorite film that Mickey's worked on, uh, Eric Roberts from Pope of Greenwich Village. Please welcome him. I've known Mickey a long time, so this is going to be a long introduction. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I'm here today to speak about my friend, the amazing actor and very spirited Mickey Rourke. Some of you may remember, <clears throat> and I will never forget, a time that Mickey was on stage at the Spirit Awards. It was last year, if I'm wrong, correct me. The most. Uh, he was at the Spirit Awards and most definitely not there to talk about me, yet that's exactly what he did. It was one of the most complimentary non sequiturs of all time. Mickey and I have reaped the benefits of a reverence together more than once, but I'm going to tell the truth now. I love Mickey Rourke for everything he really is. Greatness. Great, thank you very much. Greatness is giving a home to any homeless animal who walks into your life. That's what Mickey Rourke does. Greatness is not having to look deep into your past to find your best work, but also being able to find greatness as far back as the work itself goes. Where are you, Mickey? Thank you. I got a lot of good friends here. I see uh, I got some, some new friends. Uh, I got all my, my old friends over here. Uh, I want to... I don't know. I'm, I'm, what I'm going to say, I never know what's going to come out of my mouth, but uh, to be really honest, uh, I thought this was an event that, because when I used to walk up and down the street for four years, I worked over across the street bouncing in a transvestite bar, and I'd walk up and down and put my hands on top of some of this stuff. And, you know, most of these guys, you know, they're not here anymore, you know, like... Uh, I thought they only put people in here who weren't standing in their boots, so I was a little confused why I'm here today, kind of. Um, but uh, what I want to do is uh, uh, I'm going to thank uh, you know my really good old buddies that have nothing to do with the movie business, the ones I really love a lot, all my boxing buddies, Larry Musgrove, one of the greatest middleweights 
years ago coming. You know, current champion, middleweight champion of the world, stand up there, Amir, Amir Khan. Yeah, thank you. I don't really care about the actors that much. These are my family. And uh, I got to say, right now, the greatest living trainer in the world, the great Freddie Roach. Wait a minute, somebody help him up. <laughs> Marie, get his ass up there. <laughs> and, and of course, the, uh, uh, he got up. <laughs> All my old buddies, just sad, Richie, everybody, you know, Rebecca, and Whitey, that, Whitey, this kid here with the long hair, he was, he was my late brother's best friend. Uh, so it means a lot to have Whitey here, even though I never know what the hell he's talking about. But uh, truthfully, and I want to keep this really tight, and I'm not, and Bernie Carnio, my first agent, gave me a, the first one I got in my SAG card 30 years ago. Thank you. Uh, I see my, my, my accountant who, he, he's the most, that's the most terrifying conversation I have is with Fred. And, uh, and also my mechanic who's here who fixed every muscle car I ever had. Stand up, Bob. Yeah. If you want, if you want a real honest mechanic in a real dishonest town, you know, go see uh, Bob. We also got the Iceman here. You don't have to stand up. We can see you. <laughs> And everybody else, I want to thank, if I don't thank, if I don't thank my agent, David Unger, then he'll always be in a staff meeting when I'm calling him. And uh, I don't know, the, the person that's been with me the longest, really, and I've never really given him as much appreciation as I should, is my attorney who helped me with the acting and with other things. Uh, I love him to death. Uh, his name is Bill Sobel. We call him the shark. Harvey Weinstein hates his guts. Bill, where are you, Bill? Are you here? Where is he? Oh, hey, shark. He doesn't look vicious, but mm, Harvey hates him. Anyway, uh, I, I'm not going to go on too much further, but I, I just want to uh, well, thank my pretty girlfriend, Anastasia. Yeah. And, Oh, and the fans, yeah, yo, yeah, hey. Larry Musgrove, one of the only three guys who ever knocked me on my ass, yeah. Um, I want to take this time to, because this is an event that I'm going to think about later on. I don't know what really is going on right now, but I'd like to take a moment because the person, oh, it's going to be hard. Person, I want to, uh, dedicate this is my grandmother Give me, just bear with me a second uh, she knew about all these people here she used to, I used to watch TV and she'd tell me who Errol Flynn was and who Ronald Coleman was and of course, her favorite actor was a gangster actor, kind of George Raff, so that runs in the family. And she told me all about all these people and kind of educated me when I was a little boy about all this stuff. And she, uh, she would have told me to uh, stand up straight, keep my shoulders back, and make sure you take that goddamn toothpick out of your mouth so you don't look like some white trash hillbilly standing on the corner. And uh, she would have said, be polite, be a gentleman, say please and thank you. So I uh, hope I didn't leave nobody out, but thank you very much. I thank you from my grandmother because I wouldn't be here if I didn't have the love she gave me.
Fabricated cunts, they can't hold his jock strap. Uh, Mickey, Mickey Brand, be seen. Oh, I think because when my career was over and they said, well, you're not going to work anymore, and I was out of work 13 years, right. I just said, you know what? I'm going to make that decision when I'm finished, not done. And so it just pissed me off, and I just persevered and worked hard and learned to play, you know, to be a little more political and understand that there's repercussions and there's. You know, I, have to be, I had to handle myself more like a professional because it was my fault that I, uh, well, you know, what happened to me. It wasn't anybody else's fault. I just couldn't control the rage. <laughs> 